I mean, you covered a lot of territory, the people, the history, mm -hmm. the culture. Mm -hmm. What did you think about the food? The food was simply outstanding. My favorite is plantain. Oh. So I got, I got some of the best plantain here, and I was very glad to receive it. Um, what I like is the different um, styles of food. You know, we, our last meal here, believe it or not, was KFC. It had to get you some KFC in there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, that was amazing. But the food was here, it's very spicy. All right, we're back here in Accra, Ghana, once again, bringing you another interview from one of our Maximum Impact Travel guests. And uh, this lady right here, she is one of a kind. <laughs> she has made this trip so special. So special, it's, it's been real. Miss Sophia been, is right here. It's been more than real. <laughs> All right, let's talk about this because you're a senior citizen. Yes, I am. And I'm proud to say I'll be 70 by my birthday. I don't, I don't have any shame in my game. No shame in your game. And you really don't have any shame in your game. Cause, <laughs> no, because I'm when proud you, of it. You are proud of it, and you should be proud of it, because you had a great time here. Yes, I did. So I, I kept up most part. I kept up with everybody. You kept up. You, you did a little more than keeping up with everybody, especially when we went. It was like the last night. You the had a good night. The last night was really nice. The club was called the... Um, it was a restaurant. It was a restaurant, but it was a lot of dancing and... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, you were doing, yeah, I, I heard when you started going into the, 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 the when you started going into pop that. Belly. That's it, it was Pop Belly. Yep. All pop, right, so let's, let's. Pop, the Pop Belly Shack. The Pop Belly Shack. So let's rewind this a little bit. Why did you decide to come to Ghana? Because I love adventure, I love exploring. I've been to Africa, this would be my third time. I've, in 92, I went to Nigeria and stayed for about 15 days when I was a school teacher in Baltimore City School System, and from there, in 2018, I went to Johannesburg, and I loved it, it was beautiful. Um, I saw the nightlife there, uh, saw the safari, and, um, and then from there we went to Cape Town. Okay. So I've been to three. This is your third country? Yeah, third country, yes. So what is it about Ghana? Why did you want to come to Ghana? I wanted to come to Ghana because my daughter wanted to come in the very beginning. And she's a nurse and she has to take the boards for nurse practitioner. And so it didn't jive with her coming so she could, we had to change our plans. But I said I still wanted to go. So my cousin Connie, I called her because I know she loves to travel. And she says, I'll go with you. I said, you will, Connie? She said, yes, I'll go with you. I said, thank you. <laughs> so um, cousin Connie came with me and because um, I didn't want to travel by myself. Sure. But when I got here, I found three wonderful ladies who made this journey by themselves. And you can make this journey by yourself, and they'll be perfect examples for you. And once you become a part of the family, you really aren't by yourself once you're here. No, because no, Jay is now my um, nephew. I won't call him my son. <laughs> He's my nephew. Because I, I, you would really have been a teen mom if you had me, right? No. Yeah. yeah, well, maybe 19. Right, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so so what are some of the uh, things that you remember the most about this experience? You, you know what I remember the most? is the people here, the people of Ghana. Those are the things, that's the most important thing, the way they, they made me feel welcome. And when I, um, it made me feel when I got the plane, I didn't want to turn around and go back home. I wanted to stay here. But I know I have grandchildren and my daughter and my son that, you know, I have to go back to them. Yes. But um, just the people, the way they made me feel. They, so made, you they respected me. And um, if you ask directions, instead of them telling you directions, they said, oh, let me take you. And I said, oh. Or then, they, and then we went to get our luggage. Oh, let me pick it up for you. And that's, that's something is a rarity. You don't really see that as much in the United States as you do here. But wait, I, I have to ask this question because they told us our, our life that they didn't like us here in Africa. Oh no. 
that they don't want us around. We went to see some um, construction sites today where they're building condos, which are really adorable. And the guys that was working on them, they just, they're very respectful. They didn't, you know, how about you or who that you just looked at you. But when I approached them and waved, they came to the van and fist pumped me and smiled with, you know, the mud on their hands and, and on their clothes. And they were very um, accepting of me and made me feel very welcome. They said to me, welcome home. Oh, wow. And I said, it's good to be home. Why do you think it's important for seniors to take a trip like this? Because we don't know what's around the bend. Mm. You know, I don't want to be more, but we don't know when it's, when it's time for the Lord to call us home. My dad went home at the age of 98, so if I can hang in there for 98, uh, I have like 20 some more years and I hang out with Jay. <laughs> <laughs> So you see, you always go on your best behavior when this camera comes on. When this camera comes on, because the person, <laughs> she's real cool right now. But Miss Sophia right here is the life of the party. And and you know, I interviewed James oh, yes. on, on the last and interview. I enjoyed that interview. And and so you know, I'm hoping that the two of you have a chance to meet on a trip because the two of you on the same trip would be the most hilarious <laughs> trip. That I, that I think you I can do. You want to come back to Ghana again, right? Yeah, of course. So we don't want to put you out of Ghana. <laughs> I don't, between the two of you, between the two of you. We might do, we might do some damage. <laughs> they might say, don't come back, leave them. <laughs> All right, tell me some things that you learned on this trip that maybe you didn't know or some things that resonated with you that really stuck with you, whether it's about our history or... Well, I learned about the word aquaba. Okay. And it means welcome. And woohoo at the same means how are you. Oh, oh. How are you doing? Okay. So I've learned some, a few things, a few words, and now when I go back home, I'm going to continue to um, learn um, chi, T W I. Twi. Chi. Chi. Twi. Twi. I'm, I'm learning. It's twi. 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 It's like it's like a cross between like, twi and, and tree. Okay, right. So I'm going to learn how to do twi. Twi. There you some go. Words. There you so go. Kwaba, everyone. Come on. Welcome to Ghana. Why do you think our young people need to come? I have a granddaughter. She's 22 and she graduated from Coastal Carolina, Magna Cum Laude. And when I talk about Ghana and I talk about Africa, it's almost like she doesn't really want to, you know, really want to be associated with it. But it, it's going to take me being an example for her to want to come. So when I left, she says, Grandma, if you get a condominium in Ghana, she says, I'll come stay with you for a while. So. I think we have to make the first step is important because they have, they need to know their roots and uh, where they come from. And um, you know, our name is not Toby, it's Kenta Kunta. Ah, so uh, what, what were your thoughts of the uh, the dungeons when you went? The dungeons were um, heart wrenching. And um, almost to the point where I couldn't go in, um, well I, did, I didn't go in the cell, because the men's um, cell because they closed the door behind you and they put this metal rod over the door and it's and uh and i felt that i would be suffocating so i kind of watched from afar but um the dungeons were just unbelievable and the scratches and the marks they made on the wall I'm talking about that were enslaved they made those marks on the wall and um, to see those scratches. And those marks were something to be proud of because they wanted to let us know that I was here, I was captain. You know, I was, I had to sleep in my vomit and my feces. I didn't have any clothes to put on. I said, what? You didn't have clothes? And some of them were um, castrated, mm -hmm. well, the males were. And I said, what? And I told my son that, he would say, wow. You know, so I'm here to enlighten you those who have not come and to um, let them come and make the journey. Because once you make the journey, especially when we did the river walk, we actually took our shoes off and walked the path to the last bath after they left the dungeon. So mm. we got aboard the ship and went to other ports like America, England, um, South mm -hmm. America, Brazil. Mm -hmm. um, and then I looked at the bottom of my feet when I got home and got in the tub and all this like red, Clay who's down there. Who's mm. down there? Who's down the top? And I put about 
how they didn't have any clothes. I said, they didn't give them a garment to put on or anything. They just told them to just go and be, and then they had, I'm an artist. They had artists. They had musicians. They had scientists. They had people who could be lawyers, doctors. Mm -hmm. And they treated them like that. You know why? Because they were afraid of their strength. Hmm. And look what, look what we've gotten today. You know, Marcus Garvey, Ben Carson, and um, other great um, African American heroes. And uh, we come a long way. And we went to W.B. Du Bois Museum, and that was so enlightening. You know, we actually walked in his house here in Ghana, and he and looked at the bathtub, and he took his bathroom. So uh, they, we had greatness. And they didn't, want that, they didn't want that greatness to come about, but there's nothing that they could do. When God set things in motion, man can't control it. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, I, you know it's, it's good to hear your heart yeah. on this because, and this is why I appreciate our seniors coming. And in this group, we had a, a variety. We had teenagers. Yes, oh, the teenagers were wonderful. They were our helpmates and they, they were savvy, computer savvy, and they, you, you asked some questions they needed to do. So they had they had our back, and we had their back. I think the youngest one was 15. I think a little younger, maybe maybe 14. Yeah, and then her sister. Right. And then we had like, oh yeah, because I think it was like five altogether. Well, and well, I was, was close. Anyway, they were here, and like you said, we had from the. Um, Baby boomers to the Z. That's right. Generation. That's right. Z generation. That's right. And and I think hearing you come to terms with what happened, you know, it's like our seniors understand it because you lived through a lot of it already. Sometimes our teenagers don't understand it in context. And we were teenagers once. Once. So we know how to be patient. That's right. With them because someone had to be patient with us. Absolutely. And 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 also remembering what we didn't know then and so now you know it at this age to be able to say go see learn and really embrace this i mean you covered a lot of territory the people the history mm -hmm. the culture mm -hmm. what do you think about the food the food was simply outstanding my favorite is plantain oh so i got i got some of the best plantain here and i was very glad to receive it um what I like is the different um, styles of food. You know, we our last meal here, believe it or not, was KFC. It had to get you some KFC in there. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but, but you know, that was American. But the food was here. It's very spicy. That's that so, West Africa. That's yeah. that West Africa. So we got a nice that's the cast on hard stomach. You'll be good to go. That's that Obroni. We see we had the Obroni stomach. That, but that's I'm a rice person, so they had. Jollof rice. Oh, that's right. Of, you from South Carolina, aren't yes. you? Well, a part my of you. Are, and yeah. And so they got that rice. I'm living in South Carolina now. I'm, I'm retired vacationing in South Carolina. All that rice, that yeah. rice. But I love rice, so there's plenty of rice. Well, I want to thank you for trusting me with this journey. Did did I take care of you like I promised? Yes, you did. You absolutely. Did. Uh, and you we. Led, you led the way, and I followed. <laughs> and you know, we did a discovery call. We went through the whole journey. Mm -hmm. And when you got on the call, and you, you remember when you got on the call, yes, and you right. and you were grilling me on the call. Just one, one on one call. Yeah, you remember the call we did, the, yeah. the discovery call. Mm -hmm. And you, I think you and Connie might have been on the together. This what? is this is on the Zoom, on the Zoom, on the computer. Oh. On the Zoom. Yeah, but I think it was just me. I think I had my um, grandson. There. It might have been somebody else there. Mm -hmm. I don't, okay. It was my grandson. It was your grandson? Okay. So I knew it was somebody else. Yeah, it was your grandson. Yeah. It was your grandson. Yeah. My Vietnamese grandson. Yes. Nathan Dale. Yes. <laughs> and we talked about this trip. Mm -hmm. And we talked about this trip. I might have to resurrect that one because we had a conversation. Yes, we did. I'm glad. And I connected with you just like um, when you come on this trip, Jay's going to not just be someone that's directing, he's going to become. I'm a part of your life, hmm. so he's a part of my life now. And anything he asks me to do, I, I don't think I'm going to question it too much because it's coming from Jay. Oh no! Well, I appreciate it. I appreciate you coming. I appreciate you trusting me with the journey. Um, I appreciate you sharing your story. And uh, it's my pleasure. 
and I can't wait to get introduce and you I'm and ready, James. I'm ready. I'm ready for the next journey. Are we, go, are we going to Nigeria? Nigeria is in the works. Because okay, that's where my dad used to from Nigeria. Nigeria is in the works. So that's a uh, Nigeria, Tanzania, Ivory Coast, Senegal. But but you know we got Nigeria in the works. So. Okay. All right, everybody. We want to thank Sophia for joining us today, as she shared her thoughts about her experience here in Ghana. Hope to catch you somewhere on the continent of Africa. Make sure you check out MaximumImpactTravel.com. Be sure to like, subscribe, share. Let someone know what we're doing, tearing down the walls of misinformation and bridging the gap between Africa and the African diaspora. Talk to you soon. Adventures of Darren and Destiny. And Darren and Destiny are twin brother and sister. And you go on their adventures throughout the African diaspora, meaning so African diaspora destinations, primarily focused in Africa, but we go to South America, we're gonna to go to the Caribbean. Their first book is going to take you to Ghana. And then we're gonna go on a safari. And from there, we're gonna to go to Ethiopia. And then we go to Salvador, Brazil. And what the goal is, is to be able to inspire curiosity in the continent of Africa, in our children from a very young age, and to really tell a more accurate story. Most of our children are exposed to negative images, late night infomercials about how bad things are, everybody's sick, everybody's poor, everyone's uneducated, but that's simply not true. So what Darren and Destiny and their family do is they go to different African destinations. They are learning about these different places. You're beginning to see positive images, but still telling the truth. I mean, that's the important thing, to tell the truth about some of the things that have occurred. But it's all done on our children's level so they begin to understand it. And it begins to pique their curiosity. They begin to learn more. And hopefully one day they will want to explore and visit the continent of Africa and its many countries. There's just so much that Darren and Destiny are able to do and as they're doing it, it's, it's like they begin to open the minds of a, a new generation and they don't get bombarded and indoctrinated with negativity. They're actually able to see positivity and inspiring images and messages about the African diaspora as well as those who are still indigenous to the continent of Africa and they begin to learn more and, uh, and just see things differently. So I'm excited about introducing the adventures of Darren and Destiny.